Well, South Africa could be facing a network blackout now. It's uh, all due to these ongoing power cuts. Stage five at the moment. Mobile networks taking strain because these continuous power outages are hitting cell phone towers, causing network disruptions. So let's bring in uh, science, technology and engineering specialist uh, Stuart Perry uh, joining us this morning. Hello to you, Stuart. Glad you got power. Glad you can join us uh, and talk to us this morning. Yeah, I was and actually I suppose... That would have been an interesting thing. Yeah, that would have been very, it would have been great fun. Could have used smoke signal to speak to each other. I suppose this was always going to happen, isn't it? Because, you know, all of us every day are struggling with it. We can't charge cell phones. My garage battery died again this morning. I had to do it manually. These are the problems I deal with in life. But the country is dealing with a problem with batteries around cell phone towers. I suppose they also need to run on batteries, and those are also being destroyed at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, that's the thing. I think with, for network providers, I mean, this may not be a popular opinion, but I actually feel sorry for them. They're, they're in a very, very difficult position. When we were at stage two and, and consistent stage two problems, they could kind of handle it. You know, you, you, you ship in generators, you have battery backup. The great thing about the lower stages is all of those things have time to be topped up. The batteries have time to charge. But once you get to stage four and above, it's actually extremely difficult. You know, generally the cell phone towers that we're, we're using to communicate with each other, they need time to charge. You, you, most towers will probably need 12 hours plus to fully charge those batteries. Mm. Um, so what the large network providers are doing, you know, MTN, I think, are using something like 400,000 litres of fuel a month just to keep their towers running. Um, and really, it, it is just that problem of having time to get those batteries and those um, emergency backups in place in order to support us all. And I think, you know, network towers, cell towers, they're interlinked as well. So if, if your local tower goes down, you may get some bleed over signal from, from neighboring towers. But as those start to fail as well, it, it's very difficult. I've worked with some of the tower companies in the past. And, and on top of all of those issues, we also have the issue of battery theft. Um, and, you know, they're, they're really being hit from every angle. So it's, it's a very, very difficult situation for everybody. Uh, you took the words out of my mouth because we were talking about uh, the theft of infrastructure. Yesterday I was speaking to the MMC uh, of Johannesburg, Michael Sun, uh, about this uh, as well. And he was saying the issue during the blackouts is uh, that we have thieves walking in, stealing cables, uh, stealing generators, stealing DB boards and even substations. And I suppose that's what's happening here because we all know the value of these batteries. I think it was Vodacom that was at the 2 billion rands worth of batteries last year and those are already shot as well. I suppose, Stuart, the issue here is there's no sort of um, best practice when it comes to cell phone networks handling this because nowhere else around the world do cell phone networks have to deal with issues like this. No, that, that's exactly it as well. And you've got to think as well with the theft issue, with, with, with network towers, they're often by nature in remote locations. So even if you can put some kind of detection in place to alert you that someone is breaking in or attempting to break into a tower, you've then got to deploy resources to deal with that. And, and to get to these remote locations can take time. So I think, you know, the, the, the cell phone providers and, and lots of them as well, let's face it, that they, what they've done is they've sold off their tower infrastructure and they're renting that tower infrastructure back. So it now becomes a third party's problem to actually get power to these sites um, and to look after and maintain. And I think, you know, like I said earlier, they're being hit from all angles. Mm. I'm going to ask you uh, one of the most uh, ridiculous questions ever. What can they do uh, about this? But that's what everyone's asking them. What can they do about this? But really, how much more can they do? What would you tell them? Yeah, I think um, they definitely don't need my advice, but I think they're, they're, they're doing lots already. And I think that's what we, we all need to acknowledge is just the higher stages make it very, very difficult. So they're already, MTN, like we said, 400,000 litres of fuel a month. Uh, they're putting protection systems in. There's detection systems to, to um, uncover theft. There's tracking technologies being used in the batteries. There's lots and lots and lots of things being done. Yeah. And I think until we reach these higher stages of load shedding, they're covering it really, really well. The next step maybe is, is further fall over power. So, so when the main backup power fails, then additional power resources are put in place to take over from those backups. And I think they're rolling out solar across lots of these cell phone towers as well uh, to keep the batteries charged and to stop this, this problem with, with, the, with the loss of, of backup power. Um, so yeah, I, I think the answer is they are already doing lots. Yeah. Always, yeah. obviously, more can be done, but it's a huge expense.
Yeah, and I suppose the issue as well is uh, that many people aren't realizing yet that uh, the cell phone networks aren't passing these costs of two billion rands worth of two billion rands worth of batteries and uh, hundreds of thousands of liters of diesel over to the consumer. Or are they? I don't think they are yet. Uh, as well, so at least they're also keeping uh, the accounts low for those users uh, still sticking with their networks. But I suppose that money has to come from somewhere. It does. It does, and, and, and you, you have to wonder, you know, how long can that happen? Um, business are, uh, businesses are, are there to, to make money, um, obviously to provide a service as well. But at some point, if it becomes too costly to provide that service, then yeah. yes, costs will have to be passed on to the consumer. Uh, Stuart, let me ask you a very brief last question as I say goodbye to you. I know we're talking about cell phone networks. Don't mean to catch you off guard. Uh, I'm seeing someone tweeting me as well uh, on Twitter as well, Nalit Zane, uh, asking, please ask Stuart about Wi-Fi and fiber. Are we seeing a point where those start going down? I don't quite understand how they work, but I imagine that the uh, fiber network has to have power as well. Are we going to start seeing an issue there as I say goodbye? Well, I think lots of us already do see those issues. So that so so some of the um, main centres of these obviously have servers to provide that network to us, and they need backup power um, just as much as everybody else does. In most cases, they're very well covered, um, so it's easier with with a large site to to actually get backup power reserves in place, and you can also all, almost make those infinite. Um, so, yes, to a degree, we are already suffering those problems. But no, I wouldn't worry about it going forward. I think we're very well covered. Yeah, I think uh, hopefully that's uh, the way it's going to stay as well. Stuart, thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. Stuart Perry, science, technology and engineering specialist, talking to us about cell phone networks and the problems we're all having because of the batteries dying at cell phone towers.